Hello, this is Christy Felk with Create with Christy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I'm here to share with you a card that I made a while back and I kept forgetting to make a video on it. This um, features the Ride With Me bundle and it's in the annual catalog and includes the Ride With Me stamp set and the truck ride dies. So the truck is really popular now. I did a uh, ornament with this same truck and if you want to see it, I will put a link to it at the end of the video. But I thought I'd start putting this together for you and I love the buffalo check with this and that buffalo check is so in right now it is so neat and I'll show you how to use the stamparatus to get a really good impression on it with the colored cardstock okay let's get started I want to show you the uh, products real quick this is the ride with me stamp set little pieces that you can pop up to make it three-dimensional just a lot of neat things you can do with this but that's the ride with me stamp set and this is the die these are the dies that go with it the truck ride dies and if you purchase these together you'll save 10 percent they're in the annual catalog and i haven't had a chance to use the truck die yet i haven't had this set for very long but this makes a really cute um truck box now believe me you will be seeing some things made with this very soon I really like it a lot. And then also using, like I said, the Buffalo check, and this is also in the annual catalog. Okay, what you need is a five and a half by eight and a half piece of basic black folded in half. I found this in my stash and it was already folded, so we don't need to do that. So that's ready to go. Then we need a piece of real red, it's five and a quarter by four. I'm gonna bring my stamparatus in. I'm gonna get the Buffalo check stamped out. And now you can get this in cling, but I got it back before we had cling, so I did not put a label on it. That way it'll stick better. Now, if you've got the cling version, you won't have any trouble with that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it here near the bottom, just because I want to be able to have room for my magnet. What I did, this is a piece of grid paper. Now, normally with um, red rubber, you don't want need to use any mat. But I am finding with this buffalo check, I think it works better if you use the mat. It doesn't have to be this, but it can be the, the one that's just totally black that comes with the Stamparatus. I just happen to still have, I bought the uh, deluxe one that's also in the annual catalog that has the grid lines. It just makes it easier. I like using this one a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. Put in, this is just an old scrap of the grid paper I've used before. I don't need to have a clean one for this. Put my magnet up there so it holds the grid paper in place. This is what we don't want to move this time. Then I'm going to put my, actually we'll just do it this way. Put this down, okay, get it to st get stuck on here. Now I'm going to take my memento pad and get inked up really well. Sometimes if you kind of twist the ink pad, it actually inks it better instead of just pouncing on it. Now I go ahead and pounce on it there at the end because I don't want those swish marks in it. So now I'm just pouncing up and down now that looks like it's covered pretty good. Now I'm just going to bring this down and it is tight since I'm using that pad but I really think it does a better impression. I've done it without it before and it takes a lot more tries. And let's get that middle a little better. Okay this, I don't need this perfect, actually made it better though since it's a stamp and it won't move, but that gives me an idea to know where to put this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little piece of snail, just put it here, right here in the bottom. And because I want it to be able to come up off and on, I'm going to take a little bit of the stickiness off with my finger. It'll still be sticky enough to keep this in place for me though. So I'm just going to make sure I put that real red right inside there. I want it to make sure it's straight too because I don't want the uh, buffalo check to be going diagonal or anything like that. So that looks pretty straight. So now I'm going to ink and push it down in that adhesive right there. Now I'm going to get this all. And the reason I am not using a magnet here, if I put it here in the corner, it would get in the way of the stamp. Let me see if I, hopefully I've got this in the video. Move it over a little bit. So I've got that inked up. Make sure I get that middle. Okay. Bring it down. See, now that I don't have the magnet on the cardstock holding it down, it's not in the way of the big, this big stamp. If it's a smaller stamp, I would just use the magnet. Okay, well, you can tell it needs some more inking. So I'll ink it up again. This is why I'm using the Stamparatus. 
because I found with this buffalo check, especially when you're using colored cardstock. If you use the white or the vanilla, it tends to stamp a little better, but on the colored cardstock, it has a little harder time. So we're going to try this again. Sometimes you need to do it, maybe twice you'll get it, sometimes you need to do it three or four times. So I'll keep doing it until it looks good. It's looking a whole lot better, and it's going to be okay if I don't have this middle exactly looking perfect, just as long as I have the perimeter. And that's looking pretty good, but I think we can get one more time, I bet that'll get it. Now that looks pretty good. Like I said, I'm not going to worry about this middle area, but that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and stop. Now if you're running it even better than that, you just keep re-inking it until you get it all the way you like it. Okay, so I'll go ahead and take this off, and it comes off pretty easy. It'll stay stuck, but because I took some of the adhesive off, it's not going to hurt my paper. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this to the side. Like I said, you don't have to use the mat. I just think it works a little better. It's a little more support, and you do have to push a little harder, though. Okay, so we've got this ready. Now I'm going to bring in a 7-inch piece of the basic black scalloped edge ribbon. This is retiring. I really like this ribbon. I like the stitching in it. I don't know if you can see that or not, and the scallop is really neat. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to have it go right across the middle of the card. So I'm going to take some uh, snail adhesive, put some on each end. And if it doesn't stick, because part of it's not sticking real well, you can also put the adhesive on the cardstock and then put the ribbon on. But I want that scallop to be at the bottom. You can do it whichever way you want. I just wanted to have it on the bottom for this card. Make sure it goes right across the middle. And if you've got the um, buffalo checks on there pretty straight, then you're going to be able to get your ribbon on pretty straight too. There we go. So that's ready to go. And we'll go ahead and put this on the card base. Now this is a really pretty simple card to make. And if you um, like that ornament that I made, you can make this card if you're going to give it away as a gift. If you give the ornament away as a gift, this can be the card you make to go with it. So make sure I'm putting it in right. <laughs> Don't, well, I guess that right now it doesn't matter. It wouldn't be upside down. When we put the truck on, that's where we're going to want to make sure. Okay, so that's ready to go. I really like that red and black together. I think that looks really cool. Okay, now I'm going to bring in a piece of Whisper White. It would be a four and a quarter by three and a quarter inch piece. And I'm going to, um, it's already die cut. When I was getting some of my Whisper White card stuck out, I already had a couple of these uh, die cuts, so I didn't want to waste them. But I'm using, what I used was the stitched rectangle dies, and I used the number five die. So you start from the middle, one, I mean the bottom, I mean the smallest. One, two, three, four, five. And this was the one I used to die cut this out. So I went, since I already had that one die cut, that's, I went ahead and used that piece. Okay, now I'm going to bring my Stampin' Pierce mat out because I'm going to be using uh, the truck set and that is also a photopolymer stamp set. So it really helps to have the Stampin' Pierce mat underneath. I'm going to bring in my truck stamp and my Tuxedo Black Memento ink pad again. And I'm going to stamp my truck near the top. Actually, let's put that to the side. I think it's better because the first time I did this, I did do the truck first and I barely had room for my greeting at the bottom. So I'm going to take my Smoky Slate ink pad and get this inked up real well. This is one that says, uh, wishing you loads of Christmas cheer. And I'm going to stamp that near the bottom center. Okay, perfect. Now it's going to go better. I'm glad I remembered that because when I made the card the first time, I could barely get my greeting to fit and I could have put the truck up a little higher. So this is going to be fine. So I'm just going to put it right above, make sure the tires are above the words. Make sure that's good and stamped. Perfect. And then I've got another little piece of Whisper White. This is a one and three quarter by one quarter and I'm going to stamp the Christmas tree with that one. So get that inked up with my Memento ink pad again. And this doesn't have to be perfect, perfectly spaced just in there so this tree part is actually in there. Actually I might want to do that again. Let's retake because I'm not going to worry about all these little pine needles that are flying off because those are going to be die cut in a minute so that's a lot better. 
Okay, so I've got that stamping done. And this is the inside of the card. I'm gonna bring in a scrap piece of paper so don't get ink on my pierce mat. This is the inside since I'm doing a black card base, I wanna have white in there. And I wanted to stamp a little something. I didn't wanna put the full truck in there because then there wouldn't be a lot of room to write. So I'm gonna ink that up with the tuxedo black again. And I'm just gonna do the front part of the truck. There, so that's gonna be the inside of the card. So I've got all the stamping done. Now it's time to color. I'm gonna be using the Real Red Stampin' Blends for the truck, the Old Olive Stampin' Blends for the tree, the Smoky Slate is gonna be for the hubcaps and all the metal work, and the basic black ones are for the wheels, or the tires. Okay, let's go ahead and bring this in. I'm gonna bring in my scrap too, because when you uh, color with Stampin' Blends, they do soak through the cardstock, the ink does, and that's what it's supposed to do. That helps with the blending process. So I always start with my dark uh, color first, and wherever I want there to be dark, a darker shade of the red, that's where I'm gonna put it. And I definitely want these to be dark, because this is like the under part of the truck, so it'd be in the shadows. Okay, now that I got those done, I'm gonna darken any place where I think there should be a little shadowing. So I'm thinking a little bit around this hubcap, or the, I can't remember what these are called, but the little bump out, I know that's not what it's called. I do know, just can't think of it right now. If you can think of it, you can comment below in the video. <laughs> I cannot remember what it's called. My daughter's even got them on her track and I can't remember. I'm just gonna go right above this. And as you can see, I'm kind of scribbling. I'm not making it a straight line because you barely ever see a total straight line in real life. And then I'm gonna do a little bit right here because this is where the bed of the truck meets with the cab of the truck. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I think I'll go ahead and put a little bit of a shading right above the bumper. Okay, that looks pretty good. I can always go back and add more shading if I need it. Now I'm going to color the whole thing in with the light real red. And I'm going to make sure that I go over the dark because I want it to blend in. I don't want it to be a stark contrast between the shades. So I'm going over the, real, the dark real red until it blends in really well. So I'll finish coloring this. Okay, that looks pretty good. I don't know if you noticed in the sped up version, I even went over the light again with the light red just to darken up just a little bit. I thought it was a little too light. Didn't do it on all of it, just a little bit. Now, as I was coloring, I actually got out of the lines just a little bit, especially on this handle. So I'm gonna bring in the blunt tip of my color lifter. Just make sure it's right inside there and that'll help at least lighten it up a little bit when I put the smoky slate on it. And one thing I've learned, and a little bit there, with the color lifter, you put it on there for a little bit and let it sit, and then it starts to disappear. The alcohol that's in the color lifter starts to soak in and it removes the ink, and then if you need to go back, you can go back and do some more. But you don't wanna just keep scribbling it till it happens. You need to do it and get, go away from it for a few seconds to let it dry. So that looks better. Now I'm gonna bring in my smoky slate and I'm gonna use the dark one in areas where I think it should be a little darker. So these little grooves here in the bumper, I think should be dark. I'm going over them again because I want them to start saturating the cardstock. See how it's going through the back? That means I've got enough there. And I'm thinking both ends of these, since they're around where those wheel hubs are. There we go. And we've got little lines here in the hub caps. So I'll just kinda Take a little bit of the dark smoky slate there too. All right, now I'm gonna bring in the light and now I'm gonna color in my handlebar with the dark handlebar, handle. This isn't a bike. <laughs> there we go, we've got the handle colored in. Now I'll color the whole bumper going over the dark again to blend it in. Okay, that Hubcaps and the metalwork are done, and now I'm bringing in my basic black to do the tires. 
I'm going to take the dark basic black and just put it along those lines again of the tire. And the same here. And then I'll color it in, the whole thing with the light basic black. Okay, the truck's all done. Isn't that cute? Love this truck. Okay, now I'm going to bring the tree in. Bring in my old olives. Here's the dark one. I'm just going to put it here where all these little lines are to give it a little more depth. Just going to take a quick few seconds to do that. So that looks pretty good. Oh, missed a couple a little bit right here. There we go. Now I'm going to bring in the light old olive and color the whole thing in going over the dark areas again too. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, if you look real close, you can tell when I colored the bottom of it, I made it go down farther than what you really need it to because I didn't want to have any white space when I die cut this out. So let's go ahead and bring in my die cutting machine. And I'm going to get the tree die that's in the truck ride dies. Use my standard cutting pad, put that down. And I'm going to put this on here just so it doesn't match up perfectly, but it matches up really well. Grab another cutting pad and die cut it. You only need to do it, go through once since it's a framelit. So there we go, that's ready to go. Get this out of the way. I'm going to throw that die in so I don't lose it. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this on with snail. And I'm going to have it go right up against it. And that was the reason I die cut it because I knew my truck was going to be too high that way. I've got the little tree going up above and I think that looks neat. So I'm going to bring in a piece of basic black. This is 4 one eighth, 4 and 1 eighth by 2 and 3 quarter. And this is a perfect mat for this rectangle. Get some snail on it, put it right in the center, like so. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to bring my card base back in, and I wanted to pop this up since it's over the ribbon. A lot of times when I have an image over the ribbon, I will use dimensionals, but I'm using the black dimensionals since this is black cardstock. And yes, I use all my scraps. I know you, if you watch any of my videos, you see me use my scraps a lot. And when I start cutting the trim, I leave it on the paper backing and then actually cut through the paper backing too. So I'm going to go ahead and use these because I think it's a lot easier because then it just comes right off in the pieces that you cut it. If you start pulling it off and then cutting it, and it's just a lot more of a hassle. It works a lot better if you keep it on the paper backing. And oops. And that one, that's probably enough. I think I might put one here in the middle since I'm using smaller pieces. That way it won't collapse on me. So do use all of your scraps because they work just as good as the full size ones. And by the way, the basic, I mean, the black dimensionals are still going to be available once the holiday catalog is over. It's in the holiday catalog now, but they'll still be available after January 2nd. So I'm really happy about that. I'm just going to put this up in the middle. And we've got the front of the card done. Isn't that neat? I, I love that buffalo check with this truck set. So cool. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and bring this in, bring my scrap back in. I'm going to hurry up and color in my truck just like I did in the front. So I'll speed it up so you don't have to sit and watch me do it forever. I'll be right back. And then this will just go right inside my card base. Get my snail on there. Make sure you get it in the corners. You don't have to cover it up. The snail will hold it down really well, just using the, as much as I just used. Put it right there in the center if you're inside. And you can write your greeting inside when you're ready to let it to give it to waste to somebody. Well, there's the card. I hope you liked this. I really like this Ride With Me bundle, and I plan on making a lot of projects with it because you can definitely use it for more than just Christmas. So many different things you can do with it. And if you like this video and would like to see more of them, 
please subscribe to my video to my channel and you can do so in the bottom right corner of this video or there will also be a link at the end of the video too and make sure that if you want to be notified to know exactly when my videos come up make sure you click on that little bell and you'll get notified whenever a new video pops up on my channel okay hope that hope you liked it have a great day and i'll see you soon bye